Good afternoon. The, 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 uh, the work I'm going to present to you now is, is very much an ongoing study. Uh, and it's a study uh, by, uh, by Ryan's team, plus myself collaboratively. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm working on this project primarily because of my, um, my experience in the magnetic field expression of remnant magnetization, which is so prominent in this area. So this is the, this is the mag survey that, that Tom's just talked about. Uh, as he said, 400 meter line spacing, east-west flight lines, and with, uh, with the detailed inset at 200 meters. Uh, terrain clearance of 80 meters. That's the, and, and beautiful data. The, 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 the blue areas uh, that, that we look at in, in, this, um, in this image, so that's low values in the magnetic field. Um, can be relatively, uh, you know, they, they can be uh, blue because uh, there are areas where the magnetization is, is less strong than, than, than the other areas, which, which would be in, in red. Uh, in this particular case, they're very strongly negative. And they're strongly negative because the magnetization beneath those areas is, is reversed to what we normally expect. And it's reversed because rocks have two forms of magnetization. A ferromantic rock um, will have an induced magnetization because it's sitting in the present Earth's field direction and we know the direction of that magnetization will be the same as the Earth's field direction. But those rocks will also have a remnant magnetization. And the, 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 the relative strength of these two is very difficult to predict. It, it varies at all sorts of scales. Uh, it's called the Q factor or the Koningsberger ratio. Uh, and in, in the case of, of the rocks giving us these, these big blue anomalies, uh, that, that that, that value must be more than one. So the remnants must be stronger than the induced magnetization, and the remnants is in the opposite direction to the Earth's field direction at present. Uh, so, so, so we know that about the rocks. And, and a process to, to, to create this, a remnant magnetization is, is, is very common. As I said, all rocks will have this remnant magnetization. But to have such a strong remnant magnetization is, is rather unusual. And there is a process to create it called lamellar magnetization, which is an intergrowth um, of, of a crystallographic intergrowth that can actually um, cause a much stronger magnetization. The, the world experts in this, Peter Robinson and, and Susan McEnroe, uh, based in Norway, who, a group that we, we have some research uh, ties with. And, and I'm hoping that, that if we can recover some core uh, when, when some, of these, uh, some of these targets are drilled, that we can pass it to them to look at. Uh, the other place, the nearest place that we see this lamellar magnetization is quite unusual. The, the nearest place we see it is in, is in the uh, Giles complex. So Mar Mount uh, Harkus in the Giles complex has, uh, has this, this form of magnetization. The, um, the, the extent of this uh, remnant magnetization, the, 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 there, is, there is remnant magnetization um, through this new survey area, particularly the Campana anomaly, and its satellites, as, as Tom mentioned. Um, some dikes uh, that we see it, um, cutting through the anomaly. Um, some very deep sourced bodies underneath the officer over, over in, in West Australia, heading up towards the, 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 the Musgraves, and in the Musgraves themselves. Now, um, at SARA, we've, we've worked, uh, I've worked on, on interpretation of the magnetization direction from, from these particular anomalies and on, on some of the rocks in, in the Giles complex. And, and I'm expecting that, that within the next few weeks, we'll be in a position to compare the magnetization directions that we're getting here in the Kumpana with those. And potentially, that, that may allow us to, to correlate those rocks, because a similar magnetization direction would imply a similar age. The, um, Today, we'll focus on, on the southern part of, of, of this survey, which is, which is the area where the exploration licenses have been released. Um, as, as both Ryan and Tom said, the, the, the shallower basement depths we see are mostly in the west, deepening mostly to the, to, to the east and north. And we can see that in the magnetic imagery, the, the sharp variations that you see in, in, in the magnetic imagery in, in the west are because the, 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 the sources are relatively close to the surface. And as we go to the east, most of the um, magnetic field variations are much broader and smoother, which is consistent with a deeper source. The, um, th this is, this is uh, uh, a map where I've, I've pulled out individual discrete anomalies 
that, that, that are all due to, due to this uh, reverse remnant magnetization predominantly. And, and each of these will get a depth from, we'll, we'll, we'll get uh, an estimate of magnetization direction. And the, the magnetization directions will not be, uh, uh, we, we know already, uh, already from the uh, preliminary results, those magnetization directions are not, are not completely identical. So there's a range of magnetization directions which may allow us perhaps to, to put these into some sort of stratigraphic sequence ideally. And also, as I said earlier, to compare them with, with, with uh, those much deeper sources out to the west and, and with magnetizations in the, um, uh, in, in the Musgroves to the north. Um, as an example of, of, of interpretation of these anomalies, this is, this is one of the nice simple ones, um, a big blue hole. Uh, the, this, this is the, uh, here are the flight lines. This, this is from the, uh, the detailed surveys of those flight lines, I think a, a 200 meter spacing. The, um, this is the measured magnetic field, and on the right-hand side is, is the modeled magnetic field. So, so we've, we've run an inversion. This, this purple line here is the outline of the body that explains this anomaly. This is the, this is the data, the input data of that inversion. That's the model that the inversion creates. And looking at the, the, the magnetic field forward computed from that model, you can see that we're matching the data very well. Now this doesn't mean, unfortunately, the, the, the non-uniqueness in, 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 uh, in the magnetic method it doesn't mean that that model is correct, but it means at least it is a, a good feasible model. And the direction of magnetization is actually a very, um, a, a very robust estimate. So um, although details of the, of the shape and the depth of the body may, may not be very reliable, um, the, the, the magnetization direction itself is. So, so that, that magnetization direction should be reliable to within, certainly within about 10 degrees. And this in, in perspective view is, is the body, so that, that was the top of the body that we saw just now in, in plan view. This body is steeply, steeply plunging. Um, and it, it, we're modeling it here just as, as, as a homogeneous magnetization. That, that, that body won't, a body of that size, won't be homogeneously magnetized. But as you measure the field, some, some considerable depth, uh, uh, elevation above it, you can only have you have to treat it as being as being homogeneous. And the the estimates we get out that the intensity of magnetization, 7.2 amperes per meter, is is is, a, is quite a strong magnetization, particularly for that large volume. Uh, this is the magnetization direction, and and the depth uh, from surface down to the top of that body is about 1,200 meters. This is one of the anomalies up just to the north of the main Kumpana anomaly. This is one of the bodies out to the um, uh, set of the anomalies out to the west, and and this the the the, um, the, the most likely explanation of, of this sort of pattern of variation is that there's, there's there's a sheet of reverse magnetization, which is probably thick and, and is quite prominent in the in the in the in the south, giving rise to these high gradients. We see it it gradually tapers off to the north, and I would expect possibly feeding that. So coming up as pipes beneath it are, are these discrete anomalies underneath. So the, the, some of these bodies are, are in themselves quite complex. Um, and and uh, the, the most complex of, of, of the lot is, is, is the body which, which is the sort of southeast satellite of the main anomaly down here, which is I've blown up in more detail. And this, this particular pattern you cannot explain with a single magnetization direction. So this body has complex magnetization, and I'll show you one, one possible uh, explanation for that. So I'll show you one model that explains the data. Um, as you go to more and more complex systems, this issue of, of non-uniqueness in, in obtaining your results becomes more and more of an issue. So we, we can't know that we've got a correct model, but I, I think it's a very reasonable one. The, there must be quite a lot going on with different, different phases of intrusion of, of, uh, to give different magnetization directions. And this is our interpretation of that. We believe that this magnetization, uh, this magnetic anomaly, is caused by a central body, which has a magnetization direction very similar to, 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 to the directions that, that we saw in that earlier simple body, and, and, and that we're, co we're recovering from, from many of the other anomalies nearby. So this, this, is, this is the magnetic field just from that central body in here. And then if we superimpose on that a, 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 mag a different magnetization direction, a lower inclination magnetization direction, more, more closer to the horizontal, um, which gives this polarized positive to the north and, and negative to the south. The combination of those two 
So, so here, here are the two bodies, a, a, a central body with the, with the magnetization, which is most common of, uh, in, in the Kumpana area, and an outer body, which has a lower inclination magnetization, with different age, most probably. Um, so here's, again, is the, is the measured field. This is the modeled field. You can see we're not, we're not recovering all of the detail in here, but this is quite a successful model of, of the, the general pattern of magnetization in that body. We can always add detail in to, 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 um, to match the other features. Now, now this, this should be quite exciting. We have a multi-phase body in here, and, and we, we might predict that, that, that uh, which increases the possibility of, of, of mineralized systems. And we might expect that, that the zones of the contact between those two, two different bodies would be areas where, again, there might be stronger mineralization potential. So we can use uh, this, this sort of magnetic field interpretation to try and look at the prospectivity and, and, and develop concepts of, of, of what, what we might like to look for in these, uh, in these rocks. You'll notice that I've, I've avoided saying what I think the, the lithologies are. From the magnetics, we, that, that is, that is, a, uh, that is a, a difficult task. So uh, a lot of the interpretation is going to have to wait until we've got at least one or two holes into these. Um, depth estimation is, is really critical, as, as, as both uh, Ryan and, and Tom have mentioned in this area. Uh, you know, how deep we're going to need to go to, before we hit the basement. There are different approaches you can take to estimating depths. Uh, one is to run what's called an automated depth estimator, and, and you can run those uh, methods in, in minutes and, and, and get hundreds or thousands of solutions, but each solution of, of almost meaningless um, reliability. Um, but we've taken a, an opposite approach to, to pull out anomalies where we believe we can get good results and to focus and, and do um, uh, handcrafted solutions. And this is an example. So. You can, only get, you can only get depth from the magnetic field where you have a suitable anomaly. So above a suitable magnetization variation, you can get the depth of that magnetization direction using a model assumption. And all depth estimators use model assumptions, either explicitly or implicitly. Um, so what we do is, is pick out the features in the field. So this, this particular variation in here is a feature that looks as if it can be explained with a simple magnetization model. And this is a magnetization model. It's got a flat top. and, and um, we might hope that that flat top would be, uh, would be perhaps where that body has been exposed at a, at a basement surface. So that's, that, that, would, that would be uh, a sample of, of possibly of a, of, a, of a basement surface. Out to the side, the, 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 the basement is essentially non-magnetic, or, or you know, the, the, there's, there's no substantial magnetization contrast with the overlying sediment, so you don't see it. In here, that, that, that particular part of the basement is, is over a strongly magnetized rock. Um, and the, the, the variations, the variability we have is, is how wide that is, um, what dip it has, uh, what, what the strength of magnetization is. And if we run an inversion that tries to simultaneously match all of those variables, we come up with a model and we have a background, we have to assume a background field, a, a, a background field that, that would give us the magnetization uh, if this body wasn't present, which of course we can't know, but so it's an interpretive background field, but this is a purple line of what we expect the field to be if, if this body wasn't there. And then superimposed on that in black is the, is the measured field and, and the red line that matches it very closely is the, uh, is the model computed field. So it means our model is explaining that magnetization variation very closely, but again, that does not mean that it's right. Because th this, this particular body has, uh, has probably about half a dozen different parameters that have to be simultaneously optimized. And while depth is the, is, is the parameter we're interested in, variation of the strength of magnetization and the width of the body in particular can, in combination, uh, compensate quite effectively for any, any error we make in estimating its depth. So there is, there is inherently a fairly low uh, sensitivity to these magnetization directions. At very best, we may be within 10 to 20 percent on this. We may be exactly right, but by luck. <laughs> but but we, uh, you wouldn't want to have a confidence of more than uh, maybe 10 or 20 percent of the of the depth, even though we've picked the very best solutions to, to do this from. Now this is an ongoing work. At the moment, we've got about two, uh, just over 200 solutions, I think, and we will have more uh, as as we go through. We'll. we'll uh, the contours that Tom showed you earlier, which are generalized contours at the moment, 
we would hope to, to be able to come up with a, um, a more detailed uh, mapping of, of depth of the basement fr from that. Um, that, that. That last case I showed you fitted the data really well, and that, that data is nice and smooth because all of the magnetization is coming from depth. Um, as we go across, in particular to the east, where we have less suitable anomalies and, and the magnetization generally is deeper, um, the anomalies you can see, you, you can see from the gnarly pattern of this that it's less suitable, and, and you can see that it's a bit more noisy here, so, so that we're, we're not fitting the data as well, um, simply because there are superimposed magnetization variations due to shallower features. Um, that means that our depth is, is automatically going to be degraded somewhat. We, we're picking the best anomalies we have, uh, but out in the east and to the north, uh, there are less suitable ones to use. Um, these are the depths that we've got at the moment. Not all of these are, are basement depths, so, the, the, these, very, so these, are, these are size and color coded on depth down to about um, two and a half kilometers. Some of these shallower ones up, up, up in the north here you can see are, are not basement depths. These, these are, these are uh, depths to sources um, that are up in the cover themselves. So, so these, these depths we've got, in, initially we've gone through and, and, and obtained the depths the next thing is to attribute them geologically and, and try to put the whole thing together into a pattern. Now I focused on the, um, on the remnant anomalies, which, which is what excites me as, as my particular um, uh, interest. But, but th there are also a number of features in here. Th th these, these, mag these are the magnetizations that I said are, sh are much shallower. They're obviously up in the cover. Um, in some places, these, th these, we can see variations like this that have a distinct characteristic of, of paleo channels. Um, these particular ones, so there, there, are, there are several episodes in there. Um, whether these are paleo channels, whether they're dunes, wh whether they're um, strand lines, th they're concentrations of, of, of magnetic material, or, or certainly magnetite, within that cover sequence. And potentially with, with some, some, some uh, mineral um, mineralization uh, association, although you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to derive that information from the, from the magnetics itself. You, you need to know about the source, source material for, these, um, for this cover sequence. And this is, this is an enhancement of the data. This is just a, a, a vertical derivative of the reduced to pole that, that, that really uh, highlights the shallower features. So up here, the, the basement, um, so th th these are some of the dikes that Tom mentioned. Um, and, and those will probably be a, a kilometer or so or, or more depth. The, these, the, the, this, these magnetizations up in the cover are quite weak, but they're very much shallower. So this particular enhancement pulls them up, relatively speaking. So that there's, there's um, potentially there's some exploration work to be done on, on systems like this. Um, Although you, you can't, you can't, um, and, and the first thing as you look at shallower features is, is to see whether there's any, any uh, expression in, in the terrain that, that, you, that you can link them to, and, and that's, that's not evident in this case, so, so they're, they're still buried a little bit. Now this, this is, um, looking here at the, at the northern edge of, of, the, of the main anomaly from, from, from the Campana. I've not shown a depth for that. Um, if you use a simple, simplistic model with, with sharp edges on it, for that main anomaly, it puts it down at six to seven kilometers at least. But there is some indication, it, it, there's some subtle indications in the field. The, this, this, this line that, that in part possibly defines the northern edge of the anomaly has a fairly sharp edge to it. And there may be, a, an, an, you know, uh, there may be other edges in, inside that. Um, if that really is, 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 is a feature of the field due to, due to that main anomaly itself, then that suggests that it cannot be at six to seven kilometers, it must be shallower. But it must also be a more complex body. So you could, for instance, have a body that's, that's sort of funnel shaped so, so that it tapers towards its edges. But in the case that it does, you then, you, 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 you can't get the depth to it. You know, the moment you introduce that sort of complexity into its shape, you can make almost any shape the data. So um, there's some indication that the body may not be really very deep. But whatever it is, it's a very large body. Much of it must be at depth. And, and that larger body, the, the, the heat and the, and, and the fluids that it introduces must have considerable capability for, for, for creating um, 
mineralized systems. Now, the other feature that I'd, I'd draw your attention to in this, which, which is really interesting, are these pimples. Many of these are, are, are you see on single flight lines. And, and you see it on one flight line, you don't see it on the next, and the flight lines are, are depend, uh, this is, this is still in, in the, um, uh, this is still within the, the detailed survey area, so the, these flight lines would, would be 200 meters apart. So you see it on, on a flight line that 200 meters away, you don't see it. It has to obviously to be very shallow and very small. Um, a few of them, you can, you can see they, they appear to line up. Um, and in some cases, they line up with, with gaps between them. In other cases, um, the, you, you get pimples on successive lines. So it could actually be, although the, the, uh, the, the, the gridding is making it look like a pimpled source, it, some of these could actually be quite, quite long, thin, and very shallow bodies. Now, if you saw this sort of pattern in many parts of the world, um, you would be concerned that, that, it, that it was some sort of man-made feature, that something, that this has to be so shallow, it has to be at, at surface, more or less, and it, and it cannot have very much of a depth extent. And in many parts of the world, you say, well, you know, uh, are there wires out there, are there fences? Uh, the, out here, I, I don't think there are many. So, uh, you know, th 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 these, these are still sh natural sources, presumably, um, but they are very shallow. And I've, I've modeled um, uh, one of those. So here's, here's some modeling of, of, of just one pimple. So here, here's the, 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 um, the, the TMI, the man measured magnetic field. These contours will be quite small, although the amplitude of these is quite surprising. Uh, they're, they're, they're tens, tens of nanoteslas uh, amplitude. So here you can see the, 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 these red lines are the flight lines, the blue lines are the, uh, what we call the stack profile. So this is, this is the measured magnetic field. You can see there's, there's a regional gradient due to the very much deeper bodies, but this superimposed anomaly is, is, that, is that feature you see on that particular line. You don't see it on the line to the north, you don't see it on the line to the south. Um, and and here, here are the flight lines. You can, you can see a lit, just a little bit, maybe on some of those uh, other lines, you just really just see it on a single line. It has to be that this, this blue line is, is, the, is, 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 the, is the elevation of the aircraft. The red line is the ground surface. This, this magnetization has to be at the ground surface. Um, and this is a surprisingly high magnetization for, um, for a, a, a cover material. Um, presumably, it, 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 you would expect that it, 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 it's detrital magnetite in, in, in the sediments, uh, but, but you do, do not normally get that, that degree of so it would be interesting to, to know what that is. And, and rather than the, the six to seven kilometers to the main compounder anomaly, you could, you, could, you could hit that with a shovel. And so you know, it would be really exciting. You know, and and we, need, we need to go out there with, with, with some ground magnet, magnetometry. You see it on one line, you don't see it on the next ones. It means, it means that the, your airborne survey is not, you know, you know, is, is not giving you the resolution that you need to look at these very shallow features. It would be marvelous to get out there with a, um, with a ground magnetometer and, and, and look at some of these features. Uh, exactly what they're due to, I, I, I haven't got a clue. Um, the, the nearest thing that I can, I can th some of this, if, if this, if this uh, ground here is, 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 is limestone, is, a, a, is that right, Tom? It's a, the, the nearest thing I can think of to, that, that I've seen for this, and, and it wasn't with magnetite, but with, with tin ore, uh, is, is uh, I've seen um, karstic um, uh, penny planed surfaces of, of, of limestone in, 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 in Malaysia where the, the tin miners would, would preferentially go to the, to the small features in, in the cast, the irregularities in the surface, that, that were then very effective at, at trapping the detrital minerals in, in any, in any um, cover that's, that's washed across it, the top of it. Um, so whether, these, whether this is, is, is detrital material infilling small cave systems or, or, or top, uh, karstic features, uh, possibly, but, and again, what, what, what they're due to, what, what sort of mineral potential they could have, I, I, um, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> so thanks for your attention.